good morning but if you're watching this video it's probably not a good morning especially if you searched for it I didn't plan on making this video today I was gonna do something else I was gonna do actually using the uh, R5 2400G with different video cards that I had just to show you what it can do but several people have made comments about the ASRock AB350M board Pro 4 and there is and if you go and, and look at reviews there are people who are saying oh it's freezing it's locking why is it doing this blah 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 so I decided to do some research and I noticed there really wasn't a whole lot on this board of actual hands-on stuff so I decided to do this video okay now the first thing I want you to do pause this video go to actual hardcore overclocking and watch their video on this board okay I'll have it linked down below okay go do that now because this will help you understand even if you don't really understand everything he's saying okay so go do that now one two three oh, you're back okay so now I'm gonna try to make some sense of what he was trying to tell you because if you don't have an electronics or electrical background you have no clue what he just said okay so basically your motherboard has three power delivery systems okay you got your V core that delivers power to the CPU you got your SOC which delivers power to your USBs and and other things up other than the CPU I'm it, actual the cores when we're talking about V core this is the voltage going to your CPU cores okay the SOC powers everything else in your CPU okay and then you have your memory power okay so there's three separate powers delivery systems okay your V core on the AB350M Pro 4 is a three phase power delivery system okay it's actually two three phase power delivery systems in parallel that's how it gets the power out of it that it needs okay now what bulldozer was trying to bulldoze was trying to say is the max output of that system is around 156 amps okay you don't want to get close to that okay because there's no way the heat you could dissipate the heat okay you don't have enough cooling system to dissipate 156 amps it's pretty good up to a hundred amps okay at a hundred between a hundred and hundred and twenty five are kinda of like the yellow area that's like you can go in there for a little while but you don't want to spend the whole time there and then above the hundred and twenty five amps you don't want to go there that's red if you peek there once or twice it's okay but you don't want to go there okay so one way of control because okay that's power amperage because that turns into heat okay so I gotta show you a slide here okay and this is P equals I times E and that stands for power equals intensity of current that's the I and times the electromagnetic electromotive force or electromagnetic force that's the E and now again you're going what the heck is he talking about 
okay? To put it in layman's terms, power is wattage. So it's wattage equals your amperage times your voltage, okay? So when he talks about dropping your, your wattage by lowering your voltage, that's how he's doing it, okay? Because you're dropping your E. So now, whatever your I is, the E is less, so that means your power outage is going to drop down, so your wattage will drop down, okay? So, he was saying 1.45 volts he doesn't like to stay at. 1.42 is okay. Okay, for your voltage. The problem is, is that this board, the power delivery system, is not so great because it's only three phases and he gets to that. So your st voltage stability is less, okay? Think about if you're pushing against something and all of a sudden it, it gets lighter, your arms go forward, that will cause your voltage to go up. And if all of a sudden the load increases, it'll push your arms back and it'll drop. Because that's the kind of play that's going on all the time. And your stability is your ability to keep your voltage at a certain point, even though the force is going back and forth which it does in the CPU all the friggin' time. Now, so 1.45 is max. You want to try to get it less than that, okay? Especially on this board because I'm going to get into some stuff and I'm going to show you some stuff that I've already done. If you go into my How High video and uh, Danger Will Robinson video I show you uh, screenshots of a program now this is what you need to go get CPU ID hardware monitor link below you get it that way you can keep track of what's actually happening on your system okay and I got some demonstrations video on how you to use that. Okay. So we got rid of that one. The other delivery system is SOC. This one isn't so critical. But one thing is, is the default on SOC is 1.1 volt. Everybody recommends 1.2 volt. So you got to go in. To your BIOS, change your SOC voltage to 1.2 volts. Okay? And the last thing is your memory voltage. Like he said, 1.45 is max. Most people run it at 1.35. Okay? If you're overclocking your memory, then that's when you're going to up and up your voltages and stuff. To get it stable. If you're having problems, you want to be running your your memory at 2400. Okay, run it there until you get your stability issues straightened out, and then move your memory up because you don't want to have two problems and trying to troubleshoot two problems simultaneously is a pain in the butt. So, let's go over the results I've had previously. Now, when I was in Danger Will Robinson, my V-Core voltage was hitting 1.54 volts. Now, if you didn't catch it in the video, long-term exposure to 1.5 volts on your V-Core will degrade your CPU over time. Okay? And he was saying after about 300 hours, a friend of his did a test, and after about 300 hours at 1.5 volts, that's when he started seeing the CPU degrade. You should, you know, so 
if it's peaking at 1.5 volts, yeah, it's not good. So, what you need to do is you need to lock that voltage down. And the recommended best practice thing is 1.34 volts for your V-Core voltage. Okay? That should get you decent overclocking without driving your current crazy. Because at 1.54 volts, when it was on my Danger Will Robinson, I was hitting 99.8 amps on a four core system. Okay? That's right on the brink of the yellow zone on a four core system. On a six core system, that would have been a, probably close to a hundred and what, 30? 125? On an eight core system, forget it. It's not going to do it. Now, on my how high it was go, I locked the voltage, the V core voltage at 1.4 volts because I was pushing it, okay? And if you look at the charts, it, it, it hit up to 1.45, and like I said, this is because of the, the slop in the delivery system. Now, everything's got it. Some have more slop than others. Now, this X370 board, the way I've got it set up, it's got about a point. 03. This has got like plus or minus, and this has probably got 0.05. Okay. So when I did the Citibench on how high, where I had it locked at 1.4 volts, it would hit 1.45 volts. It hit 82 amps. That was on the Citibench. When I did Time Spy, it hit again 1.45 volts. And it hit 92.5 amps. Okay? So uh, with a four core system, even when I had it set up and running, it was starting to approach the yellow zone. Okay? My, this system here, which is a six core, it's the R5-1600. I was pushing, I'll push when I overclock this to over 100 amps, just above 100 amps, okay? So, basically, four core systems are probably going to run okay on these AB350M Pro boards, okay? Six core systems, you're going to get if you depends on how overclocking you gonna get and if you don't control things you start to gonna get starting in the yellow now that the problem with that is it also depends on how decent your damn power supply is now this has got a gold the other one has got a bronze if you've got a 350 watt no name power supply God help your soul if you're trying to do any overclocking. Okay? So, keep it under control. You, the other issue is, is like if you've got an R7 8 core system, even if you've got a decent power supply, you shove this thing because it's a, it's a micro ATX board into some small little case with poor circulation it's gonna friggin overheat the VRMs okay so you need if you're running an R7 in an AB350M board you better have a decent power supply and you better have some decent airflow or you're gonna have problems so I'm gonna let's go run some videos on so I can show you in actuality how to run use this stuff okay